All right. Well, I want to do a sort of a um, update, if you will, on the millennial reign uh, to see what people are saying. And let's do it this way. Let's just go here. There's one video in particular that I, uh, one YouTuber in particular, this guy right here, Robbie Blankenship. And I want to take a look at what he has to say. And I'm not going to, you know, he goes in, does an hour. And he, he's quite regular on talking about this idea of a millennial reign. And it's interesting to me because there's nothing in the Bible that suggests this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's not found in the Bible. So he's going to go uh, take a look at Amos 9, and we'll take a look at it too. Good evening. My name is Robbie Blankenship. I'm with The Voice of Truth. And tonight you're watching me on YouTube Live, or if you've seen it again, um, a replay, you may be seeing me on Rumble or if you're on this station. All right. And it's interesting. He's got a Bonita Beach, Florida shirt. That doesn't mean nothing, but it's just interesting. The last time I I looked at one of his videos, he had a he had a California shirt on. Now he's got a Florida shirt on. So it's just interesting to me. And he's got a little bit of a I don't know if it's a it almost sounds Australian to me, like a, a mix of Australian and uh, Southern with a sort of a almost a lisp but it uh, doesn't matter I don't know where he's from it's like he gave me this ministry the voice of truth I still call it the, it's computers they're man made they have flaws especially when man messes them they release stuff but <clears throat> we're looking again at chapter 9 verses 11 through 15 and I'll read you what it says all right, so he's going to... In that day... In that day... So, he's going to read Amos 9, and so I'm going to... I'm going to read it. All right, we're not going to listen to him. We're just going to fast forward through this, and I want to explain it uh, as we read it so that you might understand it easier. All right? And this is very important. So let's get into this. And Amos chapter 9, And I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, that's a mountain, Mount Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them, and I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. Let me just sort of, <clears throat> while I got a chance here, make a, a comparison here. It says, uh, And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent. All right, let's just make a quick comparison here. Uh, I don't want to leave nothing. Un, unnoticed here. It just if you're able to connect the dots, uh, it always helps when it comes to understanding. Uh, in my opinion, so we have the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. He's bound for a thousand years, and then at the end of the thousand years, he is loosed, and he. The reason he's loosed is so that he will go out and deceive the nations, and he deceives the nations by gathering them together to battle. So, in essence, God is commanding the serpent 
and we see another example of this here thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them okay so I read verse 4 let's go to 5 and the Lord God of hosts is he that touches the land and it shall melt and all that dwell therein shall mourn and it shall rise up holy like a flood and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt so this let's make another uh, comparison here where it says uh, the land shall melt and we could probably find a couple of them but I just want to show one in uh, let's go to first Peter oh what is that verse here I can't remember it often second Peter uh, but in the day but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night night excuse me in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up all right so anyways um, that's sort of a comparison verse right and it shall melt the God will touch the land it shall melt and all that dwell therein shall mourn and we of course we read in like for example Matthew 24 and again I'm gonna contend that Matthew 24 Jesus explains the end of the world better than anybody and you really want to know about the end of the world no Matthew 24 mark 13 and Luke 21 now revelation does not contradict anything that Jesus says at all it just goes it paints a picture and it gives us uh, more ways to look at the end of the world and what's to come what's the, the you know the things that are coming right now and the things that are coming at the end of the world and what we should expect after the end of the world so um, if we go here let me try to remember what I was talking about here and all the mourn okay so that, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn right there verse 30 right when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven everybody's gonna freak out man and like what we read in is it Luke where it says men's hearts will fail them for fear for what is about to come upon the earth men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the he of heaven shall be shaken and your cell phone's going to stop working man how terrible is that going to be for those that aren't saved right all right so anyways let's keep going it is he that builds his stories in the heavens and has founded his troop which is his people in the earth he that calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth the Lord is his name the Lord Jesus are we not as children of the Ethiopians unto me O children of Israel saith the Lord have not I brought <clears throat> excuse me have I not brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt in the Philistines from Kaftar and the Syrians from Kir behold the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob saith the Lord and then we can go to uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 33 and see and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there shall be no end so we can make a connection right there and completely destroy the idea that Jesus reigns for a thousand years it's not in the Bible and it's totally contradictory to what we read over and over again in the Bible so anyways for lo I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like as corn is sifted in a sieve in a sieve excuse me yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say the evil shall not overtake 
nor prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. All right. This is important to understand because people just want to take anything and just try to confuse it and confuse you because they are confused and they don't know. And so maybe they can make a buck off of you knowing, not knowing. Right? So, all right, listen. Uh, when it, We see this in Amos. We see this in Jeremiah. We see this in Revelation. And even when Jesus is giving his parables, he's painting pictures. That's the way I look at it, right? So in that day, what he's talking about is in that day, talking about the day of the Lord, talking about, uh, you know, in the context of the end of the world, all right? And we'll see this uh, a number, a couple more times, or one more time, I guess, uh, in this chapter. In that day I, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. This is not talking about rebuilding what was built in the Old Testament, uh, literally. And just like what we read in in the New Testament, when he when Jesus said I will destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. And they were like, are you out of your cotton pick in mind? Took us 40 some years to build this thing. You're going to build it in three days? Come on, man. What is it, 46 years? I always forget for some reason. 40 and 6 years was this temple and building. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? Are you crazy? And, of course, he was talking about his temple. He's the temple of God. And so he destroys the temple and rebuilds it. And ascends to heaven and promises to come back. And to lift us up. And to uh, uh, fulfill the body of Christ. Right? The, fulfill the fulfill you know the what how am I gonna say this the fulfill the resurrection all right the fill, the refill or excuse me <laughs> excuse me fulfill the the prophecies of rebuilding the temple a holy temple unto God not as it was in the Old Testament but a much better much greater temple And, okay, let's go to verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come. Again, this is another picture, right? That's important, I think. This is not a, like, a, a sequence of pictures. Some people teach that people that have no understanding at all this is not a sync but just like what we read in revelation it's not a movie projection that you're seeing it's individual pictures and they're not in sequence it's just giving us pictures images if you will to show us what it's going to be like to give us an idea to help us to understand all right so behold the days come that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Again, there's that word melt. We did read that before, didn't we? Yeah, where was that at? Up here in verse 5. It's the same thing, man. It's not a different melting. It's not a different judgment. It's the same thing. All you have to do is connect the dots. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. This is not talking about 1948 Israel at all. Those people reject the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's no way they could be talking about uh, the UN sanctified 
1948, Israel. The people of Israel are the people of God, and we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are the people of God. Therefore, we are the people of Israel. We are the holy nation, right? And just in case, man, you know, so many people get mad. I know them personally. And they get mad at me because I make the claim that we Christians are the holy people of God because that's what the Bible says but no they want to say those Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ they're the holy people of God we're just you know nobodies we're not nobodies because they are born um, you know because of their mother I guess or because of whatever because they're born a certain ethnicity that they are God's people and so I mean we could oh my goodness Oh, there we go. Okay, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So the law doesn't save anybody, nor, let's go this way. So, and they don't even abide by the law. The Old Testament, well, they don't. Are they sacrificing? Are, are they burnt, make, giving burnt offerings? And are them burnt offerings equivalent to the offering that God has made when he offered his son, Jesus, on the cross to pay for our sins once for all not even close right all right so flesh and blood inherits the kingdom of god now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god neither does corruption inherit incorruption so it doesn't matter what if you're born black white yellow green doesn't matter what matters is being born of God just like what we read in John chapter 3 verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of spirit what is that verse here I can't remember now except a man be born of water and of spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God and then up here, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, the, and it's seeing the kingdom of God and entering the kingdom of God is the same exact thing. Just connect the dots. Don't let nobody try to separate them. Then you see kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. It's all the same thing. Don't let no man deceive you. Okay, let's continue. Here, uh, did I read the last one here? And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. Now there is another one I wanted to go back. Uh, oh, no. Right there. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land. All right, so that, I think that's that pretty much covers it. So, um... We're going to continue to listen to Robbie Blankenship give his description, okay? I just want to make it clear and simple to see that this is all these in those days. Behold, the days come. This is talking about where we can put our hope. And our hope is that uh, in this time that's coming when there is no more evil. No more wickedness. There aren't wicked people around us. We're not wicked. And it really, when it comes, when you boil it right down, um, you can almost deal with all the wickedness in the, in the world. But it, the one wickedness you have to deal with the most is your own, right? And it can be the most challenging. Of course, it doesn't help when everybody else is wicked, right? And that's just how we're born. We're born in this sinful flesh with sinful sinful desires, but there's a promise of a better land, a better time, when all those sins 
and the sinful nature will be done away with forever. And again, uh, the, the, the circumcision of, you know, Abraham was commanded to circumcise the child after eight days. Well, the true circumcision, the final circumcision, if you will, is coming when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and that old flesh is cut away forever. Will I raise up the tabernacle of David? Okay. That's the temple of Christ, what it's talking about. It's not talking about King David. It's talking about Christ. That is fallen, which I believe David will be there. Okay. It's fallen. Okay. The tabernacle of David has fallen by this time. You know, the first temple was destroyed. Later on, the second temple was destroyed. Okay. It's not talking about the second temple being rebuilt. A lot of people think the third temple, the the, the one for the Antichrist is going to be built. No, I, this idea of a third temple, it's not in the Bible. And he's right about that. It's no, there's nowhere in the Bible that even remotely suggests it. In fact, the claim of the Antichrist building the third temple is built upon the idea that Jesus... Christ is the Antichrist. It's, it's an absolutely insane. It's one of the most in, insanely idiotic teachings you will ever hear in your entire life. The idea that J Daniel 9 is talking about the Antichrist building a third temple, it's just all kinds of stupid. Because it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, and he rebuilt the temple, and the, he rebuilt the body. And so that we follow him, and we our bodies will be rebuilt upon his return and resurrection. Upon his return and our resurrection. Alright? This is not the Antichrist. When you read Messiah, that's not the Antichrist and it's insanely idiotic. There is not going to be a third temple. The Jews are waiting to build it. What are they waiting for, man? They've been waiting since I was a teenager. You realize that? Back in the 80s, I heard about, oh, the Jews are going to rebuild the temple. Well, back then, I had no idea what they were talking about. Now I do, and I realize this teaching, it, it's insanely idiotic. Stupid. Straight up stupid. And so he's right about that. There is no third temple. I don't believe no such thing is going to be built for him. Okay? They may try to do it, but time is ticking. Right. They might, they could build a third temple, and well, why not? But it it's, has nothing at all to do with the, this Bible. Nothing at all. I mean, just like they they sanct it, uh, sanctioned uh, 1948 Israel, well, that has nothing to do with the Bible either. Uh, they could do it. It's just not related to the Bible at all. It's ticking already. We're in the seven-year tribulation. I've touched on. Uh, no, 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 no. Seven. We're in the seven-year tribulation. I, I, I wish I could show you a verse and say right there. Uh, there's seven. That uh, seven-year tribulation, and we're in it right now. That no. Th that's not it. That's not it at all. And it's not found anywhere in the Bible. Uh, when you read about the Great Tribulation in Matthew 24, all really Jesus is talking about is the world is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. You notice when they ask him, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, the very first thing he says is, take heed that no man deceive you. And he gives all these warnings of all these things that are going to happen and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And... But don't fret, you know, uh, because God is watching all the time. He knows exactly what's happening. He knows exactly what he's doing. But it's interesting here in Luke 18, <clears throat> he, he says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. And it's interesting because that's... Uh, directly correlated, if you will, with deception. Because there's so much deception in the world, it's becoming increasingly harder and harder to 
have faith because of so much confusion and deception out there. And I mean, there's this. This is all over the scripture everywhere. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That is until the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and we that are saved are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air, and then the unsaved, all the wicked, are gathered at our feet and destroyed, devoured forever. All right, and then of course we are set back down on earth with the new city and a new heaven and a new earth and there, all the wickedness is gone forever. On that, we're actually in the second year of it. It began, I believe, back last year during Rosh Hashanah. All right, so d just ignore all that. Um, first faced in the fall okay and that's the feast of trumpets I, I don't want to get into this but you want to talk about trumpets well we read in Matthew 24 and 1 Corinthians 15 in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And up to this year, it starts year two. So if you subtract one year, you know you have... If you subtract one year, and then you add 14 years, and then you divide that by 17, and then multiply it one more time with this number that I cannot even use words to describe you'll understand my idea of a seven-year tribulation and why it started last year. Or whatever. Just ignore all that stuff. You have six, and now we're going into the second year. So, so if, you, if you minus seven by one, you get six. Man, I'll have, I'll have to get my calculator and confirm that. A little less than six. Some people may disagree, but that's what my belief is. I've done a preaching and teaching series on that um, on my old YouTube channels. It's not be on this one, and it's not on the Rumble. Okay. But um, maybe I'll get to do that again with right. that here on, on this channel, and then it'll be on the Rumble channel as well. But it says it's fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. He's going to build it again, God is. going to rectify it. And that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. So everybody under this Christ that is in Christ, and that has been in the Lord ever since Adam and Eve will be in this millennial right. And all right, so just so you're paying attention, everybody that is in Christ since the beginning of the world is going to be in this millennial reign. That's not true at all. That's just. He just pulled that out of thin air. Cause he, he didn't pull it from the Bible because he can't. It's not in the Bible. But listen. Keep listening. And also, there's going to be people that did bad things that came to the Lord. Oh, yeah. that, wait a second. <laughs> He's making a distinction between people that come to the Lord... And a, a, um, the assumption is that they're good. They never did bad in their life. And then there's people that did bad and came to the Lord. And that, see, that right there, man, I got a problem with that, man. Big problem. The scripture has concluded a whole lot of people, oh no, uh, some, 
No, oh, I'm sorry. The scripture has concluded all under sin. That would include all. So, who are you talking about? Well, all, it means all. If you look up the word all in Hebrew and in, in Greek, and then translate it into Chinese, and then back into Spanish, and then again into English, that word all, it means all. Okay? That were forgiven because they repented will be in this millennial right. And then there's going to be people, there's going to be uh, people that are mortals like us now. Okay, this is almost revealing right here. There's going to be mortals in this millennial reign like us. Alright, so I'm not sure it's almost like he's saying there's going to be saved people and then there's going to be people like us. You catch that? As if he's not saved. Why would he do that to himself? Be in this millennial right. And also there's going to be people that did bad things that came to the Lord that were forgiven because they repented will be in this millennial right. And then there's going to be people, there's going to be uh, people that are mortals like us now that will be given. So there's going to be saved people and then there's going to be people like us. I, why would you say that? You, you're almost, by your own words, you're saying you're not saved. But then, I also got, I have to, I have to talk about right. this. And also, there's going to be people that did bad things that came to the Lord that were forgiven because they repented. That was forgiven because they were because they repented. No. No, you're not you're not forgiven because you repent. You're forgiven because Jesus offered his body once for all. That's why you're forgiven. For by grace are you saved through faith. By grace are you saved through faith. Now, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. We're forgiven because of what, because Jesus laid down his life for us. Not because, oh, I repent. That's not an offering to God, man. That offering is not of any value whatsoever. We'll be in this millennial right. And then there's going to be people, there's going to be uh, people that are mortals like us now that will be in that millennial reign that they're going to have a choice either to serve God or, or not serve God. Now, isn't that interesting? We have today that choice. So what changed? So I'm telling you, this is a zombie doctrine. Let me explain that. Let me explain that after I show you this verse here. It's I got a, a picture that hangs on a on a wall, and I'm sure you've heard this verse. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me. In my house, we will serve the Lord. All right. So, um, I forgot what I was going to show you. That will be in that millennial reign that they're going to have a choice either to serve God or, or not serve God, and the heathen will be there. All right. This, yeah. So the, this is a zombie doctrine, like I, I've talked about. So you're going to have the scenario where you're going to have people that are changed. Like I showed you, changed in the twinkling of an eye. See, when Jesus comes, we are lifted up in the air. Let's do it this way. 
in a moment, in the twinkling of the night, the last trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now what these guys are teaching is this idea that we are going to be changed into our incorruptible, immortal bodies. And we're going to be living among unsaved people that are in these, uh, in the mortal bodies that they're in now, right? And so they're going to be like zombies, I guess. But we're going to be sticking our finger at them. They can't help it but be sinners. Just like I showed you, God has concluded all under sin. And so therefore, when we are changed, we are pure as it gets. We have no more sinful desires. Right? And so... <laughs> Why would God do that to us? Why, why would God do that to them? These guys are all under sin. And they're going to be living among us that are changed. That are... It's... I mean... The, prob, the biggest problem I have with that is that you're saying... Just wait until Jesus comes. When you see him come, then you can start believing in him. Alright? This, and this goes back to Thomas. Now I should I shouldn't drag this out too long, but Oh wow, what's that word? Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So uh, these guys are saying to hell with that. You know, forget all about that. Just wait until you see Jesus. All right, forget about that verse. Just take your magic marker, cross that out, and just wait. Don't believe in Jesus today. Just wait until he comes. And then you'll see him for yourself. And then you can start believing. Well, the problem with that is that is as, as wicked a doctrine as any man could teach. That comes from Satan himself and not from God and that's why I have such a big problem with this idea of a millennial reign a thousand year reign of where Jesus reigns for a thousand years so it, one it suggests that Jesus stops reigning that he uh, and that uh, it also suggests he's not reigning right now and then you're teaching people to wait to believe in Jesus and by teaching them to wait you're damning their souls to hell because when Jesus comes, it's the end of the world. There are no more second chances after that. Your second chance is right now. It's today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the time to believe. Don't, do not wait. Do not put it off another day. And for the love of God, do not teach others that they can wait. Because they can't. All right. Now, in this millennial reign, this thousand year, uh, excuse me, I said that wrong. In this millennial period, not millennial reign, in this, in this thousand years of Revelation 20, there are unsaved people. Right now, today, there are unsaved people. In this thousand years, there are saved people. Right now, there are saved people people are you connecting the dots right so in Revelation 20 it says they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years not Jesus reigning but we that are saved reign with him during this time period all right and we are priest of God right now Because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people right now. Just got to connect the dots, man. They shall be priests of God and of Christ. That's what we are. We that are saved right now are priests of God and of Christ. Right now.
We reign with Christ right now. All right, the reason why this is a unique time period is because we are born of God. The Lord Jesus Christ has offered his body and resurrected and ascended to heaven. And all this comes to a close at his return. He's he has <clears throat> ascended he, and he's promised to return and he ascended and he's going to return. So this is a unique time period from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his ascension, if you will. From the time of his birth, death, resurrection, and ascension. It's a unique time period. Right? And so when he returns everything is going to be changed the whole world is going to be different and everything is going to be new let's see oh, I can't find a verse to save me I gotta start reading the Bible a little bit right here Revelation 21 verse 5 and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new he's going to make everything new a new heaven new earth the whole our whole way of living no more sin i mean just the just the fact that there's no more sin is mind-blowing all right it's going to completely change everything imagine living in a world where there was no wickedness at all it would be vastly different than what we see today incredibly different and I don't think we realize it because we're in the middle of it you know I just think we're so used to it it just seems normal to us but what's going on in the world is not normal and I just I just want to sort of shine a light on these sorts of ideas that well when Jesus comes nothing's gonna change except we're, the saved are gonna be changed there's still gonna be wickedness and then the implication is at the end of the millennial reign Jesus stops reigning what happens evil takes over yeah it's just utterly ridiculous man it's utterly ridiculous I just wanted to shine a light on this so you could see for yourself how utterly ridiculous this idea that Jesus Christ reigns for a thousand years it is right it, again I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sound this trumpet over and over again you cannot hide from this verse you cannot ignore it Luke 1 verse 33 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end